Stephen B. here, direct from Stephen B. Fiberloft, downtown Minneapolis, where the famous and fabulous come to end. And we're gonna pop your color with Mama Krista's cast on. All right. Mama Krista, the real mama of mine, her name is Krista. And so, what I've heard by the tales and tribulations is that she escaped from East Germany with only her knitting and a pair of shoes. So she taught me this cast on as a five-year-old. My mom taught me many, many years ago, and I've never seen it in an American book. And I'm going to show it to you. It provides a stretchy, braided edge that is perfect for any knit project. The Stephen B. Mama Krista cast on. Based on the long tail cast on, which maybe most of us learned when we were beginning to cast on, supersedes the E cast on or simple loop cast on because that's not stretchy. So you get to the you get to the uh, long tail cast on and it makes a nice, firm, professional cast on. But then comes along a project like a Stephen B project where you have bigger needles and thinner yarn and it's not to gauge. Then comes time for Mama Krista's cast on. And I've got two. I've got Mama Krista's cast on, and I've got Mama Krista's double-double cast on. The important things in our knitting bag is a yarn that has a pop of color, and something that has texture, right, texture. And then thirdly, something with glitter. Oh my god, I forgot my glitter. This is a crime. When you're practicing something, I start with a thicker yarn, like an Aran, worsted at least, if not thicker, and a nice chunky needle. Now let's pull our thread over our thumb and pointer finger to, to form the water pistol, okay? Then we're gonna come in from behind, so it's like shooting arrows at your heart, see? From grab, go under the yarn, clamp it to your needle, bring it down like a slingshot, go, the rabbit goes up by your thumb, up the rabbit hole, grabs the carrots, and brings them back down the rabbit hole. That gives you two stitches on the first cast on, and it avoids the slip knot method. Okay? Poke yourself on the wrist. That always reminds you you're at the starting point of the next stitch. Okay? And then take your needle, and it is now the rabbit, and the rabbit goes up the rabbit hole right here by your thumb. Okay, rabbit goes up the rabbit hole, he goes over here to the right, grabs the carrots. On top of the carrots, grab them, and then take them right directly back down the rabbit hole. At that point, lift your stitches up in the air on your needle, and spread your curtains. And if you lose your stance, okay, I like doing this. Point your fingers, and torpedo between the threads, Clamp your fingers on the bottom here, spread your curtains. Now, I'm gonna tease you a little bit because when you get good at this, you can do it all in one step. Chomp, da, da, da. Chomp, da, da, da. See the steps? It's easy, okay? Go really quickly. That's the long tail. Now, when you, once you have those initial two stitches, we're gonna learn the new step, and this is where Mama Krista comes in, okay? Instead of going, the rabbit going up the rabbit hole, this time, he's going to go jump down, go under the back fence, grab the same carrots, and bring them up under the fence. Off your thumb, spread your curtains. And now these two steps you alternate. The regular long tail cast on, and the new Mama Christas. So see the X that's formed? You take your needle tip, you go down on the bottom of the X, where you're jumping under the fence, grab the carrots, and bringing it back up under the fence. Okay? Let go of your thumb and spread your curtains. One more time. Regular. Now the new one. Bottom of the X, under the fence, grab your carrots, and instead of trying to struggle up through here, okay, let's bend our thumb and just pass up easy through the rabbit hole, 
Okay? What it does, if you look closely, it gives you a double stitch. So you've got your two stitches bundled together in twos. This provides a very decorative edge and it's perfect for cuffs on a sweater, like that, or the hem on the bottom of the sweater, the brim of a hat, okay, makes for a nice braided edge, and most importantly, the top of socks. For my cast on, I usually like to have the edges of sleeves around the stomach for a sweater and socks, and why? It's because it stretches all the way so you can get your feet in, in the socks and it goes all the way nicely back, not slopping around. So you've got your stretchiness, you've got your double clusters. It makes it easy to count. You can count by twos. I don't include this first loop. I knit that together with the first stitch so that it makes a nice square corner. Right here, you knit those two together. And so now, let's count two, four, six, eight, ten. But look at this, once you get more used to it, you can count five clusters. There's five bundles, one, two, three, four, five, that's ten. So you can go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. Now, that's lesson one of Mama Krista's cast on. Cast on stretchy because Stephen B has one pet peeve, and that's when projects are cast on too tightly. Remember, practice it three times at least, and then once in the morning tomorrow, so you remember and it ingrains in your brain.